You say like northern LA, Burbank, like the valley areas, the where it's at. It's like where they film like Ellen and sh all that stuff's up there. Right? <laughs> Ellen? Well, like like all that's where like it's the first thing I could think of. It's like where all Why the studio. Why did you start with that? Well, it's, like, it's like where Ellen? Warner. It's where Warner Brothers is, <laughs> Disney, like all that. It's north. Yo, I I did not think that was gonna come out of your mouth. It was the first like John. Let me work. break it down to you in one sentence. Ellen. They film Ellen there. All you want right. to go see Oprah live, bro? <laughs> no. Don't take it out. <laughs> you don't want a free item under your chair? No, bro. I don't want <laughs> nothing from any of those people. <laughs> like, I, really no, I love like Colorado. They filmed the Wiggles there. <laughs> 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 that was good, Cam. You're welcome. You kind of look like Ellen. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have Jordy with us. Thank you for joining us, man. Appreciate it, man. Have a blast coming through. Hell yeah. That was a good intro, Cam. Thanks. I like the the darker the lighting. Yeah. Because you just woke up? Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's easier to like it's easier to roll into these now. I guess it was pretty bright before. It was really bright before. Yeah. yeah. I really like the new setup. I keep like telling myself like, ah, oh, we're just gonna like do the podcast like later in the day. <laughs> there's like well there's not really time but i'm like uh, i wonder if it would be better if we were all more awake it'd probably be fire at like nine o'clock we're just all at just night like, no nah, i'd be too tired too tired I'd be too like, this, i'm going home yeah you're old i think the, <laughs> i think the sweet spot would be like five no <laughs> right, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you can like tell what like time my day starts <laughs> still in the morning yeah it's still pretty freaking early <laughs> Well, this stuff helps. Yeah, shout out to finally getting some more Maestro. Keep the rest of the shop fueled for a <laughs> while. Have you tried this? Yet? I haven't. Are you into like energy drinks or caffeine at all? I mean, I I used you to like make. Cocaine? I I do. <laughs> I'm from Miami. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's not that good. No. It reminds me of like G Fuel without the jitters. Oh, the jitters. It's more. Good. It's like what do you say? It's like four creatives. Yeah, it's it's good and it like it doesn't clog up too bad in your nose. So oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Don't wake up having a snotty nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you like for me to make you one? Oh, I'll definitely take one. All right, I got it. It reminds me of Miami, all those coladas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are fire. Oh, when I first came down here, I think that should be worked into an apprenticeship. Oh station. man, it's funny because like uh, usually when I do conventions, I bring a cafetera, uh, like a little uh, portable one, and I yeah. make Cuban coffees at the convention. That's fire. <laughs> and the funny part is like I learned how to make that shit on Ink Master, not when I lived in Miami. Oh, wow. <laughs> like because in Miami, it's like every corner store, every has store it. has it there, so yeah. you just go buy it. It's like a dollar fifty, and then we'll right. go through like ten a day just because like, everybody will buy yeah. one. But then when I was on the show with uh, Jason Elliott, who grew up down here, my first tattoo I did on there was a, uh, it was like an outline of Florida, and I kind of put a little Cuban coffee in the bottom, and yeah. then like orange for the middle, and then a gator for like yeah, northern yeah. central Florida. And they asked me if I knew how to make it, and I kind of it's like, yeah, yeah, I know how to make it. And I right. just, just give me a it. You lied. <laughs> I, I, I Googled it on there, and I, I started making it every morning, and then it kind of like became a ritual. Like every time I went to convention, I would just make my little Cuban coffee because like it's a big ass cup, and you really need a shot. So yeah. it's like I give it to all like the promoters and everybody at the convention, and kind of like start helping me out getting better yeah. booths and shit like that. So I would give it ritual. to all the apprentices to fuck up their line work. Oh no, for sure they'll they'll probably have a little heart attack. Yeah, I remember when I first started tattooing, I started getting that. I'll be like, yo, I get a little heart palpitations and stuff <laughs> like that, and then I got used to it. And it was like, all right, after that, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think you're nervous? It's really just it's like, just the coffee. Oh, I'm just in there, just a coffee. <laughs> it starts to get high. It's like, why is this, why is this so odd in here? It's like freezing. <laughs> So how long ago were you on Ink Master? Oh, man, it was season 13. So we filmed 2019, but it kind of aired to 2020. So it felt like it was yesterday with like whole COVID, but it's yeah. really been like three, four years now. Right. And what made you be like, yo, I'm going to go do Ink Master? Because oh, it was like, it just happened by accident. Because uh, I seen one of my friends like applied. I was only like three years into tattooing when I kind of applied the first time. And I did it as a joke where I just kind of filled the first page and I didn't go to the next. Oh, thank you. I didn't go into the next one and I kind of just like brushed it off. I yeah. just showed my picture, a couple of tattoos, and then I got a call like two weeks later. And then they kind of like did a Skype interview with me and I kind of got like, because I used to watch it growing up. So I was like, oh, I thought it was like legit. And then they told me not that season. So I applied for season 12 
And then I went through the whole, like, I was literally about to be on season 12. And then, like, at the end, they're like, nah, come back next year. And then uh, okay. apply for season 13, and I got on there. So when yeah. I actually got on, I was probably four years into tattooing. Oh, okay. Just, I feel like yeah. that, it's kind of a good time. To yeah. Go on. It's, it's, you're probably, like, definitely one of the younger artists of the season. No, for sure. And it was, uh, it was I guess, like, technically the last season they did in the United States. Because I think the last, next two seasons after that, they did it in Canada. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Wow. I didn't know that either. No, it's, it's pretty crazy because, like, uh, like was, after your season, the yeah. U.S. is like, we don't want this anymore. No, <laughs> no yeah. They're like, nope, that's it. Get out of here. Because yeah. that was during COVID, right? Yeah. it was. Well, it was, like, right before. So it was, like, 2019. And then we kind of filmed in, like, the middle of the summer. And then, yeah. um, like, I guess we started airing 2020. And we, like, went through the whole season. And when it, was, when it was coming to do the live finale, it's, like, when COVID started really hitting hard. And oh, they yeah. kind of just, like, said we're not going to we're not gonna do it. And they kind of, like, split the money between the three people who made it to the mm -hmm. finale. And they did, like, a fucking Zoom uh, online, like, reveal <laughs> of their tattoos that they did. But they couldn't do the live tattoo. So it was, like, it was dope. But I, I, it was upsetting because we're, like, the only season to have a finale. We were supposed yeah. to be in Orlando for a couple of days. Right. And I, my parents live in Orlando, so I was like so hyped about that. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, pretty much sucks. you pretty much yeah. went through the whole season. Yeah, well, then, I, I was there. I made it through like halfway. So like I made it to like episode eight, mm -hmm. and then like I, after that, I got eliminated. And they like you get kicked out. You don't know what the fuck happens. So, yeah, like, but you're still like they invite you back for the finales and all that stuff. Yeah, though, right? we were supposed yeah. to do the finale. That's the thing. They were like hitting us up about getting ready. We we're supposed yeah. to be in Orlando. They were gonna do it in Universal. And have everything there and i was like so pumped about that because my family lives out there right now and then COVID happened and then they decided just to do like an online like reveal yeah. and then split the money between the three uh finalists what hap what happens when you get kicked off i mean essentially it's like you're in a because you have to do these like interviews and you well, do them after give me the play by play because i'm actually really curious about this so you're like filming, yeah. and you know. I guess it's like voting time. I'm. I'm sorry. I actually don't really watch it a lot, but <laughs> yeah. the. Uh, and at some point, they're like, "You're kicked off." So all right, like the so, judges, right? So they kick you off, and then you literally go straight into like a interview, and they kind of like ask you about. So like, they're like. Yo, you're out. So yeah. you just, you found out. I found out, out. I got And then they're like, yo, come on, we're going to do an interview. Yeah, I literally <laughs> go from that one room where I leave and it's like kind of motion, like, all right, I'm out. I, even though it was like, I was like kind of happy that I was gone, but I wanted to finish. But it was like more, you're there for like two months in this row and you're like kind of tired. You're like, all right, I didn't get eliminated for season one or episode one. So I'm yeah, kind of happy to go home. You know, yeah, like, like, I mean, it's an halfway shit. point. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they take you into like another room and they literally right then and there, they do your interview and then. Essentially, you go up to grab your stuff because we all live in the loft. We stay in right. there and we don't. We all our stuffs on there. So you go grab your shit and you say bye to them, and then they get you a hotel and you sit in the hotel until you finish all your interviews and you get home. You don't know anything about it. Oh wow! It's like the, what are the, the what are the interviews like after? It's literally out? just asking me about like how I felt I did and. It's, I guess, like, if you ever go on YouTube, they'll show, like, the extra interviews. Yeah. They'll kind of ask you, like, like, oh, how you felt about this season and, like, if you felt like you could have did something different. Just, like, right. questions like that, kind of, like, exit interview type stuff. And, I mean, like, I pretty much just told them, like, all right, they were trying to, I guess, trying to grill me if I was, like, trying to, like, throw someone under the bus. But it was, like, more so I was just, like, nah, I could have did this better and that. Yeah. But, I mean, I was just happy to be there. I wasn't, like the end of the world type thing. Yeah. I got to go on the show. I was there long enough. I didn't get eliminated first. So to me, it was just like a great experience aside from like, I don't really do the drama shit. Yeah. Right. But other I mean, that, four years in, that's pretty impressive nah, still to make I, it halfway through the season. I, I was just happy that I even got on there. Cause like a yeah. couple years ago, I was like, I wasn't even tattooing at a shop. Yeah. I was like, I was like thinking like one day I'll do a convention. One day mm -hmm. I'll work in a shop and it, yeah. it just happened so fast. And it was, it was a really, it was a great experience aside from like, I'm not really that great with like all the drama. Yeah. Like I do have like a social anxiety disorder. So like when I got the spotlight, when it's a bunch of shit, it's like hard, hard to kind of like, explain and like kind of say witty shit when yeah. there's the things that they want so i was just like happy to be there and i was like i was just like good with it yeah there's the pressure yeah so there's a lot of pressure like to me like 
the whole experience was great because it felt like tattoo summer camp because you're in there okay. with, you're living in a house with <laughs> right. a bunch of tattoo artists who are i say 80 percent of them are really good and then yeah. a couple people that are really Some like stragglers. More person, stragglers more like personality type people yeah. but it was like i learned a lot and kind of like when i was going into it, i was kind of like seeing tattooing in one way but then seeing like everybody else that comes and does like different type of tattoos it kind of like made me like change how i wanted a tattoo and like kind of like improved me like tattooing after like the whole ink master it was like experience. more like a mentality switch and that's what yeah it was. it's like i got to see because like growing up in miami it was like everybody wanted to do black and gray realism and like stuff right. like that and that's so like stupid. everything i was pushing yeah <laughs> i was like i need to get some more lines in my work i just realized i wasn't as good as i thought it was and then were you ripping your current style on the show no like that that the current style i got happened like it was like more like an influx of me doing all these shows and stuff like that and kind of seeing the response I got with tattooing. And then um, when I started doing a lot of conventions, doing like categories for awards, like I would realize like they would like it, but it wouldn't be the same if like I didn't have any like solid foundation with like line work. So yeah. I kind of wanted to take a bunch of different styles of like, cause I, I do a bunch of different things. So I kind of want to incorporate everything I learned into like one style where I can kind of have the like the, the realism but have like the solid foundation with black line work and keep it not as busy with so much colors to keep it like almost like maybe two colors like uh complementary colors yeah, from when there. i noticed the palette stays pretty simple yeah i tried yeah. to me it makes it a lot easier and then a lot of times when i was at home doing like color realism it would take so long to do it because i'm thinking about the colors as yeah. i go yeah. versus just like kind of thinking about the value and just like having like certain color and then kind of approach it that way i think this style is cool what what would you define it as man i don't even know like <laughs> it's uh, it's like abstract and like uh i wouldn't say surrealistic but i don't know i would just like say abstract with like yeah. Because there's definitely the color realism yeah. aspects, and then the heavy black work kind of framing it yeah. out, right? No, I, I like that. It, I guess it was more so like when I would be at home and I would take like 10, 15 hours to do like a like a piece I should do like maybe eight. And it's like I start getting tired and burnt out, and so it's like, yeah. how can I like do stuff to make it like go through quicker, where I can have like the part that I like doing the realistic part because it kind of like intrigues me that, yeah. and then have like the background be like more solid color so I can get through it a lot quicker and have Makes like more sense. finished pieces. Because a lot of times I would have like it would take me two sessions to do a piece, and then you really don't get a really good photo with like half healed, half fresh, and then you yeah. have to wait till they healed. And a lot of times people don't come back to take pictures on there. Yeah, yeah, unless you're doing, like, the back-to-back -back days, it's, which can be rough. And especially with traveling. Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of people. A lot, a lot of times traveling is hard. So it's, like, I just, I prefer just doing something I can get done in one day, especially when I'm on the road. Like, like Ink Master kind of helped me with that. I was, like, all right, I need to do something with I can finish within six hours. So it's, like, I'm going to do something that I can have a finished piece, and then I can present. And then once I start doing that, I start getting more awards. People start really liking it more. Right. And it kind of, like, changed like my view on like tattooing after that how do you think cam will do on ink master <laughs> i'll do great <laughs> uh, as long as you got a good personality man you'll be on there for a while <laughs> you're trying to kick me out after that <laughs> when i stop talking shit <laughs> he's done talking shit they're like oh he's gotta go he's gotta go you get him out of here I yeah i wouldn't know. i wouldn't last an episode yeah i don't think so because <laughs> <laughs> i would talk literally zero shit about everyone i'm just happy to be here yeah. <laughs> you're gone <laughs> i respect everyone yeah. Dave Navarro is my favorite artist. Right. Yeah. Think you get mad for our, <laughs> our thumbnail? <laughs> Mark. You mean Cam Navarro? Yeah, I, te bro? I technically impersonated him, so I don't think you'd <laughs> like that. And you travel a lot, speaking of conventions. Yeah. You said you've done over probably 200, 200 plus. Yeah. It, it really started like being in Miami. Miami, I really didn't make no money. Yeah. So, like, when we would go travel, I was like, make a lot more money and then i would kind of see like different um geographics of people like and people are a little bit more appreciative like certain type of styles and tattoos as you go around so it just kind of like fueled my fire like i worked at chico's mark for life in miami where i kind of did my apprenticeship and i probably wouldn't be tattooing if it wasn't for him because he kind of hit me up about coming doing an apprenticeship and working over there so he took me to my first convention was uh 2015 was the ink life tour in fort myers and like the first tattoo i got was like i did like a day of the day with little baby like sugar skull yeah and i got like second place like <laughs> on the fucking skull my first tattoo at a convention right. and kind of like really intrigued me so i just he started after that he started taking me to all these conventions like the first year i probably did like 12 and the <laughs> next year when it went up to like 25 and then 30 
And I think the last maybe like two or three years, probably like maybe 40 each year. And wow. stuff like that. And it just, yeah. to me, it was just like a different vibe from Miami. Miami was like, I used to joke around, Miami is a sunny place with shady people. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, I would just like have a different um, feeling with like clientele, be more appreciative. They would like, they would pay money, a lot more money, and they would yeah. drop deposits. I would like win a lot more awards. So it's like, to me, it was just like going on there, it kind of fulfilled like a almost made me feel a lot better, like about tattooing. No, I totally general. get it, man. Miami to me feels like the swap shop. Like yeah. everything's negotiable. Oh, yeah. You know, like nothing has a set price. And maybe when I was younger, but like I'm just like not up for that anymore. No, nah, I've like it, you know, like I it's like I like this like kind of store mentality. Like you walk around, everything has a price on it. If you want it, yeah. awesome. You know the price. If you don't, oh, that's you fine. Go. I that's don't, like I don't want to fucking talk yeah. to you, dude. <laughs> My, it's been crazy because, like, I like when I was living in Miami, I had like at least a weekly no show, no call. Yeah. Like, every time living in Maryland for the last two years, I not have, I had one in two right. years. And that's, I've literally yeah. tattooed like that's 10 fine. times as much. So it's just like a different vibe out there. And then Miami is there's like 700 shops in Day County, Yo, like alone. Like, yeah. it, on one of the road that we had to shop on, there was about 15 shops right. all the <sighs> way from there. And so it's like, People come in and they'll price gauge yeah. and then like, like, all right, I'm going to come in here. Like they'll ask this price and you tell them, if you don't tell them like the best price, they, they won't come back and they won't Bro, show I feel like money. even if you do tell them a good price, they're like, all right, I'm just going to like go check with a couple more shops. Yep. And then <laughs> if like, I've had someone say, if you're the lowest, I'll come back. Yeah. And like, to no, me, it's, it's like, like, don't come back. I yeah. mean, it, to me, it's like, like the reason why I got into tattooing wasn't really for the money. The money is great yeah. after all, but it's more so it's like, uh, I guess, like, when I was a kid, I used to graph, and I used to draw and stuff like that. Yeah. And I would just like the reaction people seeing the, the artwork. And that kind of, like, dro drove me a lot in my early career. So it's like, because I didn't make that much money. And, like, a lot of my best pieces are on coworkers right. and stuff it's like, like that. It's like that, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, I do all the all the best work will be on there. And then, and then oh, just like everybody else, I'll be just doing stuff to make money. I feel you on that, though. Like, uh, their reaction almost being just as valuable. Yeah, to me, it's just like, because... I was big into art as a kid. I used to graph. I used to draw portraits and stuff. And then when I was in high school, I got arrested for doing graffiti. Right. And I was I was born in Venezuela. So I came to the United States when I was four months old. But I didn't have my, my residency yet at like 17. So I got arrested and I thought I was going to get deported. So I like literally stopped tattooing for about like almost 10 years. I went to school for aerospace engineering. Oh, I got wow. uh, I got my associates of uh, engineering at uh, Broward Community College. And then... I, was, I went to school in Orlando at UCF, and then it was over there where my cousin was dating a tattoo artist. And she kind, he kind of saw my, like, black book and my drawings. Like, oh, you can make some money tattooing. So he sold me a couple of machines. I tattooed myself, and I tattooed a couple of friends. And then that's when I kind of decided, yo, I really love fucking tattooing. So yeah. I moved back to Miami, and I, that's when I got the apprenticeship while I was doing um, – I went to FIU for art, and I got my apprenticeship over there at Chico's, and that was probably, like, eight years ago. And the rest has just been – Tattooing, traveling every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's insane. Two hundred conventions. What would you guys say to those uninitiated with the tattoo scene? What are signs to look for to show that that's a bad shop? Oh, man, signs of a bad shop. Just two for one their, specials. I, I would say, yeah, two for one. <laughs> I mean, there was a shop in Miami. I I don't want to call anybody's name out, but like they had really good artists, but then they had some they had some like bad business practices. They were doing like. $20 tattoos, essentially $50 right. palm side traditional tattoos like every day. I like, I don't, it's not bad if it's like once in a while here, but they were doing every day. So like a lot of people in Miami kind of got used to those prices yeah, and they'll come the in home. and you tell someone like a hundred dollar minimum, they'll like, nah, hell no, nah, it's just worth like 20 bucks and they'll go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Kind of fucked it up for everyone. Yeah. I understand like businesses trying new marketing tactics or, or whatever, but you know, sometimes uh, there's consequences and like with that one yeah because I, I remember when that was going on i was tattooing in miami when they started doing that 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 shop that we won't name yeah um, <laughs> but it's like I, you couldn't compete with it no which they might be like yeah that's a fucking point but it went on for so long that it just kind of like fucked the mentality of the yeah. industry it just came to the norm over there right. so it was like just having clientele, and that's a big reason why we did so many conventions because we just we made a lot more money in like the cool, conventions. Cool, fucked up yeah. our whole area. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're out, we're out of here. Away from it. Yeah. But what it does, and, you know, because I guess the argument on that, 
clients could be like, oh, well, you're just mad that like you weren't making as much money. And it's like, no, what, what ends up happening is you're doing $20 tattoos, even $50 tattoos. I know for a fact that shop was taking 50%, if not more, yeah. than the artists. So, so now, you know, realistically, like a small tattoo between paperwork, setup, discussion with client, printout, application, aftercare, it's almost an hour. Yeah. Or 45 minutes. So now you have a person making $10 yeah. an hour, right? <laughs> they're going to be pissed, bro, oh. and they're going to be cranky, and then they got to work more. To get the fucking, you know, the money that they tats. need. Now they're overworked. Now they're shooting out shit tats. Yeah. It's bad for everyone. Yeah, man. You're just going to have poor quality tattoos after right. that. Is. And poor quality people. Yeah. It's going to be shitty and not happy. What do you think about signs for bad shop? I think when if you walk in and it's visibly dirty. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big thing. Not having cleanliness. And I guess not having portfolios. I was going to say, nowadays, it's as easy as a scroll through Instagram to see if a shop is good or not. You can check out their work and stuff. But then go to a shop page and see if they're the main artist that they push is like, meh. Like, you mean the quality of artwork? Yeah, quality of work, I think, extremely, like, determines the quality of a shop, like, I think there's there's ways they got around that because there was a lot of shops taking like other people's work and putting it on their page and yep, like right. they would call yeah. get called out for it and I guess being a client you don't really understand no, yeah. you see oh this that looks amazing let me go get tattooed and shit like that and then you get shit work and shit but yeah I think eventually over time when you have like those type of business practices like you're gonna fail anyways yeah. because they're gonna realize yeah. that you're not coming out there and then. A lot of tattoos, like, it's, like, hearsay. Like, you get word of mouth. So, after a while, like, 10 different bad tattoos are, like, nah, don't go over there yeah. no more. There's no longevity in, like, something like that. I don't like the, like, I'm too cool for you shops. Like, where you oh, walk in yeah. and no one talks to you, really. And they're just, like... Really cool yeah, people. That yeah, like, I'll be with you like in a minute, cool guy and shops. then it's, like, an hour. Or you walk <laughs> in, and they, you walk in, and they, like, look up. Yeah, like, they visibly like, see you you're there. Yeah. No, they, but they don't even say that. They're just like... <gasps> They're like, I'm uncomfortable. Yo, and then you have the opposite but the same effect, which is the overly sensitive shops. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you've oh. been to those, but I just had my first experience with one not too long ago where, like, it's almost like we are doing everything in our power to never get canceled. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I feel and like, like all their products are like a certain thing. It's, like they a, help it's more me. like a salon. <laughs> yeah. It's. I, I don't even the, know. About, it's just like the. It's like so bad. I can't even talk. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> We're all fucking get canceled. Yeah. But it, it's just it's that culture and because I've walked in, just kind of be, I'm yeah. I'm always the same, bro. Like I'm mildly inappropriate and yeah. trying to make people whatever and. A me- almost faster than the cool guy shop, I felt unwelcome there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think that they realize that they're producing the same effect as, Another like, the cool one, people yeah. shop. Is it, like, a fake nice almost? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's just, it was very, like, clear to me right away that, like, how I was was not appropriate for that shop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I, wa- I, I wasn't, like, bad. Yeah, I was yeah. with Seth, and we were just, yeah, you know, talking Different. shit or whatever. Florida boys and yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, but it's like I think these these shops because I've seen a couple of them. Like they're, it's almost like their standard is to accept everyone. Like we accept everyone. We'll never get canceled. Yeah. You know, like we're culturally appropriate and sensitive, and we're up to date on all the trends. And you know, especially with like um, products they use. Uh, they judge people that like don't use those products or like that hurt oh, like it has the environment like the, yeah. or like non-vegan or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, you know they're really like gender conscious, which you know, cool, whatever. That's a thing. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're like, yeah, but don't like force make, people. Make, to don't do make it. me feel like real bad about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Almost like conform to their standards a bit. Right. Like I was cursing in the shop, not at them. Just but they're like, you can't loud. do that. Yeah. And it made them uncomfortable. Yeah. No. And they said something about that. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> they like, they did, but they didn't. Like, it's very unconfrontational. Like, I don't know. I said something like, oh, fuck. Like, I forgot this or whatever. And then the next sentence, they used one of those, like, 
curse word replacements. Oh, like, oh frick. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to like really show you that like we're not cool with this. These are the words we use in yeah. the shop. I was like, yeah. I'm getting the fuck out <laughs> of <that." laughs> oh, What's happened to the industry? Yeah. I feel like when people get like that, they're just not really a th- like real about it and they're just like doing stuff to like look good. And- Bro, can you imagine how much work it would take to live that lifestyle? Oh, hell no. Oh, like, <laughs> I couldn't do that. Right though? Oh, I just it's it's ridiculous. It's like going to meet like your uh, uh your significant other's parents. You're yeah. Like, all right, best behavior. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. Like all the time though, your yeah. whole life. Yeah, man. You have to, like yeah. think about every sentence you say like, before you say it. Don't be yourself. Bro. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a bad quality of a shop for you. Yeah. 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 Not because of what they're doing, but just how they made yeah. me and another customer feel. Um, which listen, I'm it's sure almost like they were trying so hard at me. It was like they were trying to conform me. Dude. Yeah, like as soon as I walked in, they're like, "You're not good enough. We're you gonna new, push we're you gonna in the direction." You, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you go back a better person. Right, and I'm always like, "Yo, isn't that like I got into this industry for the exact opposite reason? To get so away that from I could the, fucking wear yeah. a hat at work. I didn't have yeah. to fucking dress." A yeah. certain way, or wear a uniform mm-hmm. that I could have, you know, either crazy get away hair from the or face hats, and, stuff, or, yeah. and just kind of be accepted by everything. And it's funny because like people will walk in in this shop, and they will be surprised with how comfortable they are. Yeah, they're like, "Whoa!" I walked in here, and like people are talking, and I'm like, "Yo, is that still a thing? Like, are you are you going to other shops, and and people are not like that?" Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah, it really is still a thing. Yeah, I get clients so all the time that are like, "Oh, this has been the best experience here." It's like yeah. horror stories, and within our five mile radius, you know. Yeah, I'm sure it's happening at like conventions. Oh, People yeah. are like, "Oh my god, you're so nice." It's like, what do you what do you <laughs> think <laughs> I was about? Yeah. yeah, I thought you were an asshole. Though. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, you know, because you have that crazy face <laughs> tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get I get looks from it here time and time and stuff, but I don't know it's it's. It's just crazy how things are going. Like people trying to push one agenda, they're going through the opposite ends of the spectrum on each way. It's like just be real, just have a good time yeah. and treat people yeah. nice, and that's it. You don't have to like make people be something that they're not. Yeah, right. I, I mean, being like a heavily tattooed person or like in the industry, especially like ten years ago, there is kind of this like mentality stuck in the back of my head that whenever I'm meeting people that like aren't in the industry or aren't as involved with like body modification or like tattooing, like almost like I have to prove to them that I'm as human as they are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. Which maybe, maybe that doesn't exist as much like in the world. Um, But I think it does play into like shop etiquette and, and you know, whether it's um, someone coming in for their first time or someone that's unfamiliar with the industry in a positive way, I do feel like it's, it's my job to provide like a, a good introduction for yeah. them. Like, even though we, you know, look different or I have modifications or whatever, like I'm still human just like you. Yeah. And like, we're going to walk through this and it, it's no problem. Maybe back in the day, it, like I was like, I know you're fucking judging me and I got to <laughs> be like extra nice yeah. to like, just break even. No, I felt like it was like that when I first start, first started tattooing, but I got to a point now where it's like I've tattooed so many different type of people, right. like from doctors to like police Law officers, like yeah. to like uh, rappers and stuff like that and athletes. But I just try to treat them like, yo, I'm trying to do the best job possible. Come in, I'll get you something to drink and stuff like that. And, yeah. But I try not to like – be fake or anything like that i just want to be myself and just like show them a good experience because i feel like the experience is as as, as important as the actual tattoo and stuff right like that. right no i 100 percent agree i mean i've had clients well i'll get a lot of like collector clients that'll just get like one piece and then yeah. they're like to this person which is cool because i get to see like cool pieces, pieces from on yeah, there, yeah right and they'll always like tell me kind of story i mean i'm curious i'll be like oh you got tattooed by that person like how did that go and <laughs> More often than not, they're they're like, yeah, the artwork's good, but the they, experience they, they was sucks. terrible. Yeah. I've like seen that a lot recently. Yeah, yeah, where it's like a lot of collectors like don't have good experiences at some yeah. of these artists they look up to. Yeah, no, a lot of times I guess the 
people get so high and mighty because they literally tattoo and they're like the, the biggest thing or whatever. Yeah, and they're just and they're, forever or whatever. Yeah, and, and they just like <laughs> treat people like <laughs> shit <laughs> and they don't yeah. care because they, they have the clientele to like kind of brush things off and shit yeah. like that. Or they just feel like the work speaks for louder. Itself and stuff like yeah. that. But I don't know. Like to me, it's like I want people to be like uh, feel feel comfortable in the shop and they come in and usually like if you treat people right and you're not an asshole they're gonna come back and get more work or they're gonna tell like other collectors yeah. and stuff like that it was a good experience and stuff and i don't know it's i've, I've gotten tattooed by a lot of assholes too yeah and me too some of them i love but i just want to make my clients laugh bro and i want them to have a great time and i want that like when when i have a new client we kind of joke harder that day, or at yeah. least I do. And I'm like, this is what the shop's like. <laughs> and most of them vibe with it. And then, like, the next time they're back, like, they're just part of the gang. Yeah. And that's, like, what I want. You know, I want, like, and I think we do pretty well here with, with everyone. Like, everyone kind of knows everyone's clients. And, like, maybe Cam yeah. has a client coming in or fucking John White. Dude, and even I'm just like, oh, what's up, dude? It's yeah. not even my client. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's good to see yeah. you, bro. Yeah. Just John Nelson, for an example. John has a client that's also named John Nelson with an oh. H. <laughs> His but dad's like, name is John Nelson. <laughs> yeah. So it's like he's now just getting tattooed by Katie. Yeah. He wants to get a piece from me. But it's like everyone knows who he is when he walks in now. Right. And it's cool to see him and it's cool like, and I think he, he keeps coming that. back yeah 100 yeah. percent. he wants to be cool with everyone because he's realized they're like oh these people are cool you right. know and it's like it's cool to see that like grow because he right. is like kind of just getting into like being like a shop rat or something like that which is something i really like about like having the home base shop yeah you kind of get the other end of it where if you start doing the same conventions or the same guest spots all the time, you, you meet your people yeah. in that state or whatever, which is fun and like nice to yeah. see. Like, um, yeah. you know, I got to see one of my clients in New York mm -hmm. and Philly and I haven't seen them since the last time I did that. Yeah. I'm like, damn dude, it's good to see yeah. you. Yeah. I saw yeah, my man. Philly client in New York and I was like, Oh, this is <laughs> sick. Like yeah. I would never see you in my region. Yeah, it's like, yeah. here you are. Nah, that's crazy. Like I have usually a couple clients in Atlanta that I literally, every time I go there and I just work on a sleeve and it's like every single time. So I've done all these conventions throughout the years. I've literally done the same one. So I've, probably been to them like six seven times so it's like yeah. i have clientele in like different cities. that's a big reason why i moved to maryland because i used to do the virginia beach hampton rose convention and i built such a good like clientele there from doing it every year it was easy for me to transition to go over there and already had the clientele so yeah like, i didn't have to go there and like struggle for a little bit I already had clientele on there so it's it, it worked out good doing the shows and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then coming back home for like the home base is it's pretty cool too Cause you say you just kind of have like a collective for your home base, right? Yeah, it's like uh, I work with two like really good artists and nice. stuff like that, and we kind of feed off each other. But I mean, it's it's cool to be out there and like travel and come back home and just like get to relax. But I get kind of really bored doing the same thing every day and like being in the same spot. So like for me to go travel, it kind of like makes me want to come back home and tattoo more. And then when I'm at home too long, it makes me want to go on the road. And, right, and it kind of like keeps it interesting throughout my whole career and I don't get like kind of like complacent and get tired of doing the same. Speaking of the industry, this, this last week, I always do this and I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do it, but whatever. do it. I like just bring up shit that like happened, <laughs> do it, happened in my do week. It. Bro, I had this like person reach out. Um, this has happened a couple of times actually. And I want your guys' opinion on it. They reached out and, you know, you give shoot them the booking policies uh give them the price and they're kind of like okay yeah um i see the price like maybe you could give me like a discount because like i'm in the industry like i'm a tattooer myself i mean i feel like once you ask for a discount i don't want to do it anymore yeah. yeah, like I feel like it's like bad taste in your mouth. Bad taste. Like usually, yeah. when I work with someone in the shop, I don't. I'll tattoo them for free, and if it's someone of my friends, I'll tattoo them free because I just love to tattoo my homies and shit. But like once you ask me for it, I really don't want to give it to you. Especially like if I was gonna give it <laughs> yeah. to you already, and then you ask, it's like nah, not gonna happen. Yeah. I kind of feel like raise it's the like price. A, a waiter or waitress going out to eat, and then like you get the bill, and you look at the person waiting on you, and you're like. I'm in the industry, so I'm not going to dip you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, you don't worry. It should be like the it's opposite. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, 
I, when I go get tattooed by other artists, like I feel obligated to do more than yeah. the yeah. customer. Like I have to tip more than the average person. Not only like, do, am I gonna pay full price? Um, but I'm gonna tip you like twenty yeah. percent, even if it's like a four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll that's give you the saying, money. Dude. That's it. Um, not that know. clients should do that. I'm yeah. just saying, like, <laughs> like in the industry, yeah, because yeah. 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 I should that. know better. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like and it's like you've been through it. Like I, I worked in the restaurant industry for like seven years before I tattooed. Actually, I worked at Bass Pro Shops, Alan Rada Fish Company for like nice. seven years. Fire. So like every time I would go like go sit in other restaurants, like yo, I know all the work that they go yeah. through, and I want to give them the money because it's like you respect what they're doing. Right. Same thing with tattooing. It's like I, I get tattooed by Jacob Sheffield in um Elysium in Grand Junction, and, yeah. and he always tries to hook me up, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna give you more than what you asked for because I respect right. the work you're doing right. and I understand it's like it's your time and you're putting this effort into it. It's like I'm going to give what I can because I, I ask for it when I get tattooed by like when I tattoo other clients and stuff like that. Yeah. I just had that. I did, When I just got tattooed, like dude offered me a discount and then I just ended up giving him full price. Yeah. But there was a part of me that's like, I wish I could just take the discount. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't mind. Just yeah, 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 yeah. It's but, almost like that, like politeness bullshit. Yeah, you, know? yeah. Like, you go for the card, but you're not, you know you're not gonna pay. Like, oh, right. it's like, <laughs> sometimes I right, take the discount. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, at least give you something for it. Like I, I don't want to get anything for free. That's the thing, bro. Even yeah. when I'm getting tattooed at my own shop, like I'm throwing people money. Yeah. You know, like that, or if I'll, I'll trade tattoos or something like that, like tattoo for tattoo and do buy the me, same buy thing. me lunch. Or yeah. Something, something like simple, that. You know? Yeah. If they're persistent, like I'm not taking your fucking money. Well, cool. We'll figure something else out. I don't like the, the trade. Yeah. Cause like to me, this is just how my mind works. It's like, okay, getting tattooed. Cool. Um, first I'm coming to work on my day off to be in pain and give you money. <laughs> then you're going to reject my money, but you're going to set up a future date where I have to work for free. Right. That sounds <laughs> terrible. That sounds terrible. Yeah. I'll, let me just give you the money. You've done it enough, I'm, though. Yeah, like, I'm going to the just money, tired. and I'm not going to fucking it, work we're just going to hang out. That's it. Yeah, it was already a terrible day. I like where like, I'm at the point where it's like, if I do a trade, it's like, I'm doing a little banger, and I'm getting like a whole panel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking selfish. I'm going to do a little banger. <laughs> Nah, it's the way no, to go. No, I'm a good person. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you get little tattoo. I get big one. I care about my friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> what was that, Cam? <laughs> what did you just say? If y'all want to give me a big tattoo, I'll give you a little one. <laughs> That's weird. I heard a little, like, twang. <laughs> give you a micro portrait and just give me a full color portrait. Yeah, yeah. bro. Um, You're lucky Johnny doesn't you don't want me. You don't want me to do a full panel on you. <laughs> There's all these, like, new styles coming out, too. We just made a video making fun of that um liquid. the liquid tattoo have you seen that shit I haven't was they just pour the ink on somebody's head and then tattoo well it's it, not however. just their head it's like anywhere or they'll yeah. like flick the ink yeah on them Splatter. i've seen that where they kind of like have like that rc like water feel to it but it's kind of like they used to have that black work project yeah when in italy where it's oh, like more yeah, black like more black, black yeah that you know one. allegory sponsored that oh he did i didn't yeah. know that i didn't i found that out recently too i was like oh damn you guys are fucking you cool guys are sick yeah. <laughs> you, you know how many calls we get for that do you guys really do tap out blackout sessions like, <laughs> no but maybe if the price is right <laughs> oh, yo but it's like it you haven't seen any of the videos the brutal they, ones? The, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no they like, splash ink or they drip ink or like whatever. It's I like this Jackson it Pollock bullshit version <laughs> of like tattooing. <laughs> and like I, I, like I guess I could see like where it, it comes from. I always wondered like what if you fucking, because you know these, these clients out here. What if you like splatter it on and then the client's like, yeah, no, I don't like that. And then like, okay, you wipe it off and you like try again because you don't have any like control yeah. really. It's just like, it's like rolling the dice. Yeah, it's like the look of the draw and stuff yeah. time like that. Bro, I'll just like put ink in my mouth and spit on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be That's all about it. the experience. <laughs> Find out on Pornhub later. Yeah. <laughs> fucking you definitely have you. people that pay for that. Yeah, I'll just literally... Drip the ink bottle while I'm peeing on you. <laughs> and wherever it goes, we'll tattoo. And then there's the cyber sigilism. 
You know about that? The Thin Tribal. You seen that? That's just I tribal, haven't seen man. that. It just looks like cat scratches, kind of. Yeah. It's like oh. skinny tribal, dude. It's horrible. I know oh, you've man. seen it. It's bad. I've probably dude. seen it on there. It's just, I don't know how I feel about those. It's I, I think I think I got. I think I have yeah. to like pull one up for him, man. It's it's bad. It but they're like they're really persistent about like it's not tribal. Yeah, it's not tribal. Have this you is, seen? Um, it's like, remember those like old like temporary tattoos that yeah. are like tribal esque? Yeah, kind of like that. It looks like if you got like struck by lightning, kind of. Oh, like went on there and like going all the way down. Yeah, you can just do a scroll through that. It looks like if <laughs> tribal had autism. Yeah. <laughs> My first one. You Shit. Know? We should get Man. Will over here when he got that fucking one on his arm. Oh, Will bro, got white fucking... bread, bro. What are you getting this shit for? Yeah, yeah. He got, yeah, man. It's like if you scared tribal real bad and tried to run away. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he's shaking his head. He's like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, nah, I don't like it's it. It's like, like tribal yo, with you're gonna, tattoo removal. If you're going <laughs> to get <laughs> tribal, bro, commit. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, the whole don't, point don't is like, I don't live with the body and stuff like that. Like, I. It's funny. I don't. I don't like. I remember doing a lot of tribal. Like growing up in Miami, a lot yeah. of like the old Cubans. They love tribal over there and shit. Yeah, like bro. '90s tribal. But it's funny. I, I hate doing it. But like, I even like some of my tattoos. I kind of incorporate into like certain designs, but not in that that way. But with the. Heavy well, I feel like work. like a lot of like that new calligraphy, dark calligraphy yeah. stuff's like very very similar to it. And like that's in. Listen, I'm just glad I learned in a time where. Tribal is not in. <laughs> bro, but yeah, it's making, you know, it's coming back. Damn, with the ballpoint, though, she. Bro, it just looks dumb. Yeah, it looks, yeah, yeah flow it's to bad. It and just like, it's you know. like barbed wire that wasn't <laughs> processed correctly. Yeah, it's like yeah. some, it's like people come into the tattoo world and they're just like, I'm a bad artist. It looks like, like somebody just, just went like at a piece of metal with chainsaw and was like, I'm going to tattoo that. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a decent way. Yeah. But, yeah, but dude, I see like guys who are very established, sick artists, yeah. and now they're actually posting tribal tattoos. I'm like, what's going on? I Why are we so bringing this shit back? I guess they're like uh, baby, <laughs> make things retro. But yeah, fuck, like if anybody here who does a tribal, I already know. Right, Yo, nineties shit is yeah, in right it. now, bro. But fuck, <laughs> bring back Jinko jeans, not the fucking tribal <laughs> tattoos, <laughs> man. <laughs> you keep those back over there. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me a Walkman, but not a fucking yeah. tribal <laughs> tattoo. Yeah. Uh -huh. not, have you ever seen like people doing tats, slinging tats at convention, and you're just like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> what am I looking oh, at? Oh, a lot, a lot. There's always that's the thing with, with a lot of like bigger conventions. There's such a like difference in like uh, quality of tattoo artists. There's yeah. some that are really good and they go in there, and then there's there's some mids, and then there's some people that shouldn't be at conventions. Yeah. Even though like when I first started, I probably shouldn't have been at conventions. Right, right. But like to me, it was just. A lot of times I'll walk by, and it's like, oh man, you can see why they're not booked out or not busy at the convention <laughs> right. and shit. It's like but, a circus show sometimes. But I mean, just I, walk over. You guys doing free tattoos or like, <laughs> giving away? <laughs> yeah, just like you know, three fourths of the convention is just doing side leg to butt tats three days in a row, and it's like cool. Another girl's face, cool. Another girl's face, school. And then like I'll get excited when I see someone just like doing some weird shit. Like, oh, you're fucking tattooing homie's face, or you're doing <laughs> yeah. like a neck, <laughs> yeah. or yo. Even though I would never do it, I see someone like slanging a rib piece. I'm like, you're fucking crazy, yeah. bro. Like, why would you do this? Like, at a convention while everybody's looking at yeah. your face. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Like, your client's going to tap. It's not going to be your best work. Like, you're fucking miserable. You're probably standing all day Back on this through. shitty massage. Like, I have respect for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, for taking that deposit, baby. <laughs> so people who fucking start full body suits. I'm like, y'all got three days. Three days. Yeah, bro. like the three back. The, the ambitious back pieces are crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Third day, I, they walk in our one that It's like, oh, never again. I'm not going to try to do a whole back piece on there in three no, days. That shit never works. I need like six sessions and you get it <laughs> done in three days. <laughs> yeah, when I'm booking tats for a convention, I'm really just like picking and choosing the things that I'm going to have the most fun, be the most comfortable, and the coolest clients. Yeah. You know? I, usually, when I, I do the same thing, but I try to get like pieces, either if I'm going to do like three days where I can kind of work my way up and not like tattoo into the other spots. Yeah. Or if I'm doing a single piece that I can finish within time, because right. I mean, when I first started doing conventions, it was mainly just to make money, get out of Miami. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm at a point where it's like, 
I want to go there. I want to like kind of do my best work and kind of like show people to see what I'm doing and stuff like that. And I kind of get my name out there. So it's like, I try to get those pieces and that kind of how I develop into that the style I'm doing now, where it's like, I'm not spending like 12 hours on a tattoo. I can spend eight where I can have that little bit of detail and then have like easier, like solid background or finish something I can get through done by tattoo of the day or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they like make the, f- Fucking entry times at weird times. Yeah, it's, it's at nine. Usually at nine before. Or yeah, if but it's we just like did one. It was at like four or five. Yeah, o'clock. dude, New York. They had entry. It was like at five o'clock. For like dude. tattoo of the day. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, what, like who's like, cool? <laughs> let me enter half my fucking tattoo. Yeah, yeah you can get the line work in. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who has the best line work? <laughs> That's what yeah, it's weird. What would you say has been like, or is like one of your favorite venues for conventions? I mean. It's usually my favorite convention I do every year. It's actually not a big one, but it's the Puerto Rico show in December. It's literally, it's like a vacation, but then they have like an influx of artists that I usually don't see in the, the convention circuits in the United States. They have a lot of it's, European artists because yeah. Yalzi throws a show. So they have a lot of artists from South America, a lot of artists that I don't see because main the main conventions I go through, it's the same artists I see all yeah. the time. The and I have, like, guys just run, roll together. Yeah, yeah, so it's like when I do those like conventions, I'm going to go see my friends. I'm going to see the same people. Um, so it's that one. And then I really like Golden State and the Empire Show just because of the artists on there. And I kind of see like a lot of artists I look up to. and the, like yeah. The caliber of artistry, yeah. yeah. And, we'll be and, at uh, Golden State. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Wait, I'll be out on? there. Oh, I'll uh, be at Golden State. I, I love Cali, <laughs> I, just, I go over there just for, to go to Cali. Like, the first time I went, I made no money. Like, last year, I made a lot more money because I, I, I went there the year before. Yeah. But, like, I love Cali. It reminds me of South Florida. Just I love Cali. Just so not yeah. as, like, muggy, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if I like Cali. I love Cali. Depends on where you're at. It's, like, same thing here. It depends on where you're at. Like, yeah. L.A. sucks. Yeah, I don't it's, know like, you like. need to know about, like, the Fort Lauderdale's yeah, and, like, the I'll other spots there. up there. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like What are the other spots? I'd say, there? like, the Valley. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like Why are you laughing, Danny? <laughs> like, just like anywhere, like thirty minutes north or south of LA, yeah, you're LA, fine. LA, <laughs> you want to go straight into the city, sucks. yeah? Huh? LA kind of sucks. LA does suck. Not dude. like, um, like the people I was going to meet didn't suck. <laughs> I really, I really, I really do like highly believe Miami sucks more. Ah, uh, you might be right. Actually. No, hundred percent. I agree. Like the people, <laughs> like it's just a different people there right over there it's more just like i'm like in my own New York world people better than la people because they just don't care and they just leave you alone like yeah. everyone's just like i have somewhere to be right now i don't care about you or what you have you to do, do. like i'm want. going yeah like people don't bat an eye in new york like that's how it is new york people are like mean to your face and yeah. la people are like mean behind your back yeah that's what i'm saying they're like fuck you you're in my way you're like thank you for being straight up yeah <laughs> you you get out the way yeah <laughs> like thank you like yeah. i will move <laughs> like la people are like man i wish this fucking dude would move and you're like you just tell there. me to move bro <laughs> like no i definitely say like northern la burbank like the valley area is the where it's at it's like where they film like ellen and shit all that stuff's up there <laughs> Ellen? Well, like, like all that's where, like, it's the first thing I could think of. It's like where all Why the studio. Start with that, well, it's, like, it's like where Ellen? Warner. It's where Warner Brothers is, Disney, like all that shit's normal. Yo, I, I did not think that was gonna come out of your mouth. It was a first like John. Let me from. break it down to you in one sentence. Ellen. They film Ellen there. All you want right. to go see Oprah live, bro? <laughs> no. Don't check it out. No. You don't want a free item under your chair? No, bro. I don't want <laughs> nothing from any of those people. <laughs> I, really Yo, I love like Colorado. Them. They filmed the Wiggles there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was good, Cam. You're welcome. You kind of look like Ellen. Sure. <laughs> Same haircut, you know? Yeah. Sure. sure. Where <laughs> is Golden State in? It's in Pasadena. Okay. So it's like maybe like 30, 40 minutes from actually like LA and stuff. Yeah. That's a cool area. I, you been there? Mm-hmm. I haven't. It was fun. Well, it was not funny at all. It was uh, when I did co- when I did uh, COVID. COVID. When COVID <laughs> happened is when uh, we were like twenty minutes from when when Kobe passed away. Like he was living in Calabasas, so we we're at the mm. convention on Friday, and then Kobe died in that plane crash, and we we can see the smoke from the convention. Oh. It actually passes. You reminds me of like Fort Lauderdale. Like you have like across the train tracks. It's like. Don't go there, and then it's like this part of the train tracks is like, oh, that's nice. That's literally in front of our shop. What are you talking? No, that's what I'm saying. It's like within like a half a block. It's like either really Bro, nice we're on the or like don't go there. Yeah. We are. If you, you are by the train right tracks, the you're on the front line. Yeah, 
it's always been like everywhere in Florida. It's like one side get, train tracks nights, other side. Yo, like uh, US one, dude. Oh, is like, I, I I'm, know. <laughs> I'm happy to take that responsibility. The beach though. side, no. Nice. They're trying to cross over the tracks. We got you, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, we're there. You got to come through us first. Yeah, we're there. There we go. And drop a fucking Front deposit. Line over here. <laughs> a lot of people ask about my setup and the ink I use. All I use is Allegory ink. We have the white, the black, and the ultra black. This is my total setup right here. Get yours at allegoryinc.com. We got a discount code for you, unemployable, for 20% off all their ink. Again, allegoryinc.com. Have you ever done like a seminar or anything at the conventions? Uh, like to go see it or like to throw one? Either side. I mean, I haven't done one at the conventions because usually when I go to the conventions, it's a lot of, uh, I'm just working the whole weekend. So it's like, I don't really have time to go see them. I do a lot though. I, I actually like, um, I was at the Explorer Tattoo Conference like two days ago before I drove up and stuff like that, which I do like to go to a lot of seminars because I like to pick up a different things. And it kind of like keeps me like fresh on my toes, like trying to learn new things. Right. And then even to like reinforce certain like things I didn't know and like kind of ways to go about like how to approach tattooing, business side, art sides, and like even life in general. Yeah. Have you have you ever thought about doing your own seminar, or master class, or more informative, or do you currently? I, I don't. I I have been a part of uh, one where I kind of want to do one later on, but I really want to like have everything down packed. Like I, I want to have like a really good presentation. And to me, I still feel like I'm still learning a lot, and there's yeah. a lot of things I I have to like kind of get through before I do it. But I would love to do some because I I feel like. The education part of tattooing is kind of really important and like kind of help people to like see different ways to tattoo and like you can kind of share what you learn you're kind of giving back to the community that you got back from when you first started which is so like the opposite of traditional tattooing yeah. right like don't fucking tell anyone but how to do anything yeah. yeah and like now everyone's like putting classes out which i i think is fine i think it's actually great um i never really liked the the secrecy stuff yeah but we've been bouncing around the idea of you know, doing some kind of like uh, either online or like put it on tape type uh, introduction or, or just like informative, yeah. you know? <coughs> but my thing is like, because then when you start doing that, you start thinking about like, okay, what do I actually know? What could I teach? And then you're like, and me, I'll say yeah. for me, I'm like, yo, what if I like say something wrong oh. or like I've, you know give yeah. bad direction yeah. or like a lot of the stuff i do i'm not even sure i can explain in words yeah you know yeah. like i feel like if i did like a master class video it'd be like all right first like drink five cups of coffee <laughs> then yeah. make sure you order uber eats before you start because you're gonna get lost in the tattoo <laughs> you're not gonna eat <laughs> and you're gonna forget <laughs> to eat and you're gonna get cranky yeah and then the Uber Eats will come in an hour, and then that's when you take your first break. Hey, that, that's like, time that would be my, like, <laughs> master. <laughs> that, that's important. That's time management. Yeah. You got to kind of know when you need to eat, when yeah. you get everything ready. But I feel like there's so many different aspects of tattooing that, like, people don't really think about. And, like, it, like sometimes even, like, going through that, it's like I do it more personally for myself so I can kind of remember things and like, all right, I kind of forgot about doing this. Now I can kind of incorporate it back into tattooing what I was doing beforehand. Yeah. Sometimes the apprentices catch me off guard. Like they ask me questions that like I haven't thought about in a while. Like when Cam was doing it years ago, he was like, what's that like gel shit on there? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. They just like, told I've me just to do rubbing it. rubbing this on people for 10 years. <laughs> it probably has to do with the skin. You know, <laughs> then you're like, then you're like Get involved in it, you know? Yeah. And then you kind of, like, find the reason behind it. And you're yeah. like, all right, you kind of educate yourself about, like, yeah, what yeah. you need to learn and stuff. Well, yeah, and then after that, I started, like, researching all the, the, the gels. And, yeah, you went um, from Aquaphor to, like, monkey boogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, the different, like, health benefits <laughs> or, like, application yeah. benefits. That's what I call the inky stuff. So it, what I'm getting at is it helped me. <laughs> or, or, like, I'm like, I oh, don't put the tattoo like that. It's backwards. And they're like, why? And I'm like... That's something we go back and forth about like, a lot I here. Know, I don't know. Because someone told me yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, now I'm looking at, like, flow and, like, body angles. And, it, you know. Yeah. So it can end up being, I sometimes I learn more teaching than being taught. No, you know? I, I agree on it. That's a big reason why I've, 
I, I do the seminars or if I'm going to eventually do it, just more I have to kind of research and kind of like, all right, why did I do this? And right. find the reason yeah. why. And then you can kind of either either you're wrong and you figure out what the right thing to do or you just reinforce what you already know. Bro, yeah. did you go to like art school? Uh, I mean, I went to FIU's art school, which – I don't know. It was it was good, but it just got me into drawing again. But I feel like I really didn't learn anything that helped me. I learned more about art and tattooing than I did at art school because it was all contemporary. It was about why I wanted to draw something, paint something. And yeah. to me at that time, I just really wanted to enforce like uh, figure drawing and understand anatomy and like yeah. color theory. Like to me, like the biggest thing I really wanted to learn for tattooing was color theory and understanding like values and stuff like that to kind of improve my overall designs because right. i feel like when you first learn start learning tattoo is all about application and then after that it's about understanding your art and like things that can improve your artwork and kind of make things stronger and hold over time that's a good point like most of tattoo apprenticeships are about application yeah, like because right? because like once you figure out how to physically apply something to the skin it's all about what you want to do and you can kind of take your art to whatever lengths and Absolutely. Yeah, I, could, I, would, I was just at a shop where, like, everyone was, like, certified fine artist yeah. schooling, and I, that's not me, bro. Yeah. Like, they're like, yeah, you know, I went to this. I did, like, four years of becoming, like, a portrait artist and, you know, uh, all the words you're throwing out that we hear. And, like, I, don't, I didn't do any of that. Like, I did fucking heroin and begged for an apprenticeship, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um and if anyone wants to learn about that, I fucking got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it, it, and then I don't know. Maybe someone will be like, okay, but like the artwork's there. Like, h how would you do it? And and for me, it was kind of like you were saying. Like, I just kind of like picked up little things yeah. along the way from from other artists. Yeah. And maybe I don't. And I don't even understand like why I do it. I just know that like. A shadow is supposed to go here. Yeah. Or like the contrast, you know, light and dark is important or, or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes like I've seen a master class or a seminar like from kind of like a street kid like myself yeah. that kind of breaks it down like stupid for so stupid you can people. Understand how to and tell. it's like way more helpful than oh. like someone breaking down color theory or like light application or like depth and field. They're like, all right, listen, guys, like if you do something like dark over here, do something light over here. I'm like, damn. Yeah, no, or I like, <laughs> yo, an easy way to start is a third, you know, dark, a third midtone, and a third highlight. I'm like, no, that's like perfect on that. there. It's like, I mean, yeah. if you think about it, it's just like having balance in a piece and you breaking down like almost like in a harmonic, harmonic like design and yeah. makes things more pleasing to the eye. But like, I probably say the biggest thing I learned was like I, I've downloaded a shitload of fucking like those re like guy actions and reinvented the tattoo and right. all that. That's where the biggest thing I learned about like design and everything was that it's like stealing all those fucking videos everybody had from back in the day. Yeah. And I th probably the most helpful session was that I ever did was the um, the tattoo gate one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you we were talking earlier. You yeah. said you were at what it was. It was at the Explorer conference where um, Russ Abbott kind of like brought up the idea of having different options. Was this like the one that everyone was talking about, like yeah. that the girl came from? Well, it was I guess it was could be one there because I guess he has his own like uh, seminar, uh, Russ Abbott, where he was kind of like giving like you can like make money not i want to say make more money on there but like if you're putting more effort into the design and time and you're meeting up with them you can kind of give them options so where where was this oh it was at the explorer conference okay and you were there in person yeah i was there okay. there and kind of seen like the the whole presentation for that oh, wow. which the the girl like took that shit to her own thing and kind of like fucked that shit up it's just really Do you bad know practices. the girl no i don't know if oh, she is okay. that I don't even think I, I don't even know if she was there. I don't even know what her Instagram is. So I just seen the video. That was it. And everybody talked about it after. Right, right, the Fox was sick. Um, <laughs> Best yeah. line drawing ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what, like in, what did you get out of that seminar? Well, it was just mainly him talking about how we can kind of have our time more efficient, but it's just giving options. Cause like, some people are willing to pay more if they want to be more involved in design and they want to have more structure to it. Yeah. And it, I, I thought the idea was pretty, pretty well because you don't have to be like, all right, you're going to 
get this design and you're you're gonna have to do that or anything like that yeah. it's more so it's like giving them option if people want to have be more involved in design they can spend more money to be involved because you're spending more time with them with the before artist. the tattoo she kind of took her own thing and like oh i'm just going to charge you for the design and a lot of people right. took that as russ i was saying oh you should get money for your designs beforehand but it's just giving them option to be more involved it was very obvious to me that the artist took it and did did, did their, their own, own thing, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um Hopefully it was to everyone else too. So what I'm hearing is kind of like maybe a typical tattoo experience is like, you know, you give me your notes and your reference pictures and I'll do my own thing. Yeah. And I'll see a day of. And the other option might be like, you want to be more involved. Maybe you want to come to the shop, meet in person, person. sit down. Yeah. And that's the other option. So yeah. was he kind of saying... There's like the quick option and then there's the long, more yeah. drawn out option, which would cost more. Yeah. So essentially he, he breaks it down like, and it wasn't even like saying that you need to do this. It was more so was, he was trying to find other ways. Cause it's almost like, like a concept, like a concept, like almost like if you're a graphic designer and you're meeting for like a design and right. you have like those options, but it's like, she kind of put it as like, Oh, you're going to just going to pay me for the drawing time. And even if you don't get the tattoo, I'm still making my money. It's more right. so it's like, he was like, all right, you can have the base rate where you pay this normal amount where you meet up in the day and then you have another option where you can have like one design you give them an option to have like three or four revisions and stuff like that and then the the most expensive with just more revisions but you're supposed to have like a, a like a design like fully rendered on there yeah. and have everything like presented it's supposed to be like a professional like almost like a graphic designer and stuff like, like that. ready she, to run digital yeah. painting. Yeah. yeah, like, and, and even, the like, it shows the lady was willing to pay those prices, right. but to see, like, a good design, and the girl just, like, gave the a five-second sketch and shit, and, like, you're supposed to, if you're going to be making the extra time, you're supposed to put in the work to do the design and have everything done professionally. Like, with the options, I actually have the picture of, like, the the slide that he showed where, like, the three options on there. Oh, wow. And it's just more so he was doing as experimental, see if people were willing to pay those prices for that extra work on there. But it wasn't like... Like, a, how valuable that yeah. extra time was. Yeah, and it's just, like, it was just, like, how he was trying to, like, kind of show is, like, ways, like, tattoo artists can make, I would say make more money, but, like, be, have their time be more efficient and then sure and if they're putting extra work into something like on there they can get confiscated confiscated for it no i mean the that concept of getting paid for time makes sense yeah. to me um like i'll draw the morning of the tattoo which if if they know call no show the only thing I'm receiving for that draw time is the deposit. Deposit, yeah. Right. Um, I just made sure I had you know big enough deposit where it felt somewhat okay. Yeah. Because my draw times, you know, for for that day, maybe not even the whole piece, but like, uh, you know, three, two, three, maybe four hours between two and four hours. You know what I mean? And then. It's it's worked into the price of the tattoo. It's I think you have a really similar way you do it. They show up if they want to make changes. That's fine. Yeah, something but quick they and have simple. A, yeah, I don't even care if they want to make changes the whole day because yeah. like what was happening to me was we would make all these changes. Well, let me give you the structure first. You buy a seven hour time slot. Yeah. with with me. We can do whatever you want in that the time. seven hour, yeah. Yeah, we can fucking take pictures. We can high five. We can play tic tac toe. Yeah. We can make changes to your design. Unfortunately, you're cutting into at, tattoo time. Right. At the end of that seven hours, we're done. Yeah. Even if we only tattooed for an hour. Yeah. But it kind of removed because I would get so mad. I'm like, oh, these mother motherfuckers are like making changes. And like, because I used to not start the clock until we were tattooing. Tattooing, yeah. But then sometimes the changes and the re stencil and the it would be fucking hours, bro. I, I had something like that happen to me at a at a guest spot. And I was in New York and I came in and like when I when I talked to the client, like she was like kind of open to whatever design I did. Yeah. But when I got there, she wanted to change things here and there. Yeah. So instead of starting at twelve, we started at one thirty tattooing. Right. And then once I finished the tattoo, it was like maybe six or seven. And I charged her for the full day rate. And then she was like, oh, we only tattooed for five hours. We passed the half mark by an hour. Right. So you're going to charge me the full day. It's like, no, you made changes to the design, yeah. which you, you had that time, like kind of went into the tattoo time and 
I got to get compensated because I'm still here for the whole day and stuff right. like that. So, like, I feel like the more design that they kind of go in, they're losing their time to get tattooed. And I remind them about it. Like, I'm not trying to steal anyone's money. As soon as we sit down, I'm like, here's the design. They're like, oh, can we make a couple of changes? I'm like, that is totally fine. Yeah. I'm just going to remind you, you know, that our session time is done. I start at one. Yeah. So it's like, and, and I even kind of like, <clears throat> you know, settle in or whatever. So my like clock doesn't really start to like two yeah. in my brain. Cause my cutoff time is like eight thirty nine o'clock. Yeah. Right. If we like show in early, whatever. But in my head, I'm like eight thirty nine o'clock. That's kind of the longest. I'll yeah. Go. I'm the same and here. Even if I finish like early, it means I completed the piece. Like we're good. And I really haven't had issues with that. But I'm like, hey, listen, if it's a long change, I'm like, I know, you know, it might seem s simple. This is a longer change yeah. to uh, re-edit this and then create a new line drawing. We're looking at about a half hour, hour. Yeah. Before I get into it, I just want to make sure that's okay with you because it does cut into the session time. Yeah. I just, I like to apply a little bit of pressure because yeah. I feel like it makes the decisions a little bit more meaningful. Yeah. And they're not I have just had times things. where people are like, oh, I, don't uh, like I didn't that. realize yeah, it'd be that yeah. much time. Yeah. Maybe it's not that important. What do you think? And then I'll give my honest opinion. Cause sometimes clients do hit me with changes where I'm like, I actually do think your idea is better. Yeah. I just had that happen two days ago. We, I did everything he said on this, on his um, sleeve. We did this kind of like whole external back to back day. Uh, which I like, because if you book a back-to-back, -back, you're getting way more than yeah. seven hours a day. Yeah, and then you're getting a finished piece right. that you can present. So, he, I, I incorporated all his things. In my head, I was like, okay, like, they're all the same style, and they do kind of match. But, like, subject matter-wise, they didn't extremely, like, match that well. Yeah. And then he wanted to change the one thing that I was, that I didn't think fit the aesthetic into something better. And I was yeah. like, you know what? This is a really good change yeah. in making and, and and it was cool we agreed on it he was happy i was happy because i'm sometimes i'm welcoming those changes yes. no i'm the I'm same saying. way like if it's something that's going to prove the piece right. like i i don't mind like fixing changing something in there right. as long as they're not i guess too strict and they're like changing things where i feel like it's not going to look good or right. like if they're like change the whole subject i'm pretty fine with it if it's something that where i have to redesign the whole thing and and i need some more time i'll tell them like we'll we'll finish the design today and we'll just we'll remove the schedule we'll change the schedule to another day and we'll do right. the appointment another day because i like to have enough time to tattoo. yeah i can't do that oh yeah <laughs> no because <laughs> no. another day would be next fucking year and it's and I don't want to, that throws away my whole day. Oh, yeah. No, know? usually I try to do is like when I do my scheduling, I schedule three months at a time. And then I leave dates in there where if I need to like move someone into there, I'll kind of, yeah. kind of move in there. Because like I've done it where I've booked out like six, seven months. And yeah. then like I try to get a piece I couldn't finish and set up another session. It's like five, six months yeah. later. And then by the time I get back into it, like I don't have the same vibe, not the same like yeah. environment. It's just like it feels different on there. Too much of a break between them. Yeah. Like no, I, we've I, been thinking about, like, I just hate closing books. Yeah, no. Nah. You know? I will, I, like, I hate it, too. I mean, I, I never say I'm, my books are closed. I just say, oh, That's my books are smart. opening for these months. Yeah. But I'll take people in as long as, like, the designs are cool. Now, if it's it gets to a point where I have too many appointments booked out, I'll, I'll put them on a waiting list. And I was like, as soon yeah. as I get in, I'll put you in yeah. those dates on there. We've been trying to, because I really just prefer the back-to-backs. Um, and the way, like, my booking is set up, it's, uh, you get, if you book back-to-back -back days, yes, you are required to put down a deposit for each day, so yeah. two deposits. But you get a better rate on the day rate. Yeah, so, like, I do try the same to encourage thing. That. I do the same thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. like, with that, the three different options I have, like, my main day, I try to keep it one rate i'll give them a discount if they either do a pre-made design that already have design so i don't have to come in design anything in the morning or if they do two days three days back to back because i i want to push for those i want to have like those pieces finished have a good like picture of it because to me if i can't get a good picture of it, it's like i'm not gonna be able to promote what i'm doing yeah. and stuff like yeah. that i don't know what you guys are using to heal your tattoos but you need to use saniderm this is all i use to heal tattoos that i do this shit can heal anything. Well, almost anything. Go to saniderm.com, use discount code CAMSUCKS. 
I know. It's a great code. To get 15% off, it's again, saniderm.com. Which I, I definitely think benefits the artist. Like, I'm going to take on pieces that are my style, that I want to do, that I want to be known for, that I'm going to be proud of. Because, you know, every every once and again, like, I'll, I'll just, like, do a piece that... It's kind of just like whatever. It's yeah. not like bad, but there's just so many of them out there. Yeah, like you I'll just use like the lion clock rose. I mean, I, st- I think I stopped, like I said, no more lions, you know, to Kyler or whatever. But if I like do do that or not, skulls are cool, but if it's like just a skull, there's so many just the skull tattoos, yeah. I'm probably not going to post it. Yeah, no, I'm the same you way. Know? Like I try to like kind of cultivate a certain style yeah. when on my instagram and a lot of times i won't post and i'll tell them right then and there i'm probably not going to post this because this is my 15th like oh, you'll line. tell them yeah i'll tell them i'm not going to post just because i'm trying to cultivate and a lot of times because things i don't like to say no to people yeah and a lot of times i'll pick up a lot of projects that i'm not that fond or not gonna, i really yeah. don't want to keep on doing i'll let them know i was like i'm doing this because i want you to be happy but i'm probably not going to post it because i did 15 lions or 15 right. like Poseidons already yeah. and already have enough of those on my posts. And I, I let them know about that so they don't get butt hurt when I don't post a picture. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> you just blame Kyla, though. It's like, not oh, she picture, didn't post you know, it. I can't get it in. What do you think about, uh, what do you think about all this, Cam? Seminars, Tattoo Gate, booking policies. It's interesting. Like, because I didn't, I didn't really like peep <laughs> What it because he went to the seminar, like it yeah. sounds like it was actually like a lot more like the chick blew it out of proportion, yeah, definitely probably like ruined it for a lot but of people. But like not knowing anything and seeing the video, you kind did you kind of knew that, right? Yeah, you didn't think like Russ really was like, oh, yeah. no, no, draw yeah, shit of course. Fox and no, yeah, no, of, of course not, yeah, but I never like actually, s- I didn't see Russ's like examples yeah, either, right. you know, so I don't know, but like it does make sense, and I do think that. As an artist, you should get paid more if you do put in the extra yeah. time. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the Unemployable Podcast. We have the Unemployable t-shirt. It's okay. Also, we have a variety of other clothing on the modelcitizenapparel.com. You can even use discount code CAMSUCKS for 10% off. Why are you guys standing behind me? All right, dude, yeah. I think we got to shut this boy down. Yeah. yeah. Little outro? Yeah. Jordy, man, thank you for joining us. I had a blast this episode. Much, Thanks for bringing the puppy, too. Oh, oh I love yeah. it. Dude, <laughs> everyone in the shop's <laughs> excited she about doing? that. Yeah. She's, she's, doing that. she's doing good. She's sleeping right now. Oh, Damn, nice. Over there, right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out to Tesla. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways, Jordy, thank you again, man. We'll see you guys next week.